You know, it's kind of hard to follow Pastor Jim. Uh, it is. When he, when he does a message like that, I felt like tonight that I was almost tempted to go ahead and tell Angel Hope that I would come up here and just stand. And she could play the CD from this morning's message over again. And, and we wouldn't be anywhere near the worse off for that. Uh, because that, that just was. That was, was an awesome, awesome message this morning. But look, let, let, let's let the, the Lord bring us a word tonight. And, and uh, we'll, we'll do the best we can. And the Lord can, can use us as he will. And I just want to tell you about a, a, a truck driver. He was hauling a, a load of 500 penguins to a, to a zoo. And uh, unfortunately, his truck broke down. Um, eventually, he saw some trucks passing by, most of them full. But eventually, this truck driver noticed he was in trouble, and he pulled his truck over. And he happened to be empty. So the first truck driver goes ahead, and he says, look. He said, I'll give you $500 if you'll deliver these penguins to the zoo. And the guy said, okay, I'll deliver the penguins to the zoo for you. I'll take the penguins to the zoo. Well, a little bit later in the day, the first truck driver got his truck fixed. And he's driving it into town. And he no sooner gets into town. And what does he see but the Second truck driver walking across the street with 500 penguins following him across the street. He stops his truck. He gets out of the truck. He runs up to the guy and he says, what on earth are you doing? He said, I paid you $500 to take these penguins to the zoo. The second truck driver says, I took the penguins to the zoo. I had a little money left over. So now we're going to go to the movies. <laughs> you know, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't take long if you don't understand your mission to mess something up. If you've got a lack of communication, if you don't understand your mission, it doesn't take us long. It doesn't take us long to truly mess something up, to get off track. I don't know if you've ever just missed something or not. I have. You know, you, you find yourself, you think you're doing okay, and somebody will come up and let you know that you just missed it. <laughs> you're, not, you're not where you think you are. You know, there's people in church that are exactly like that. Sometimes we miss the mission. Sometimes we miss what we're supposed to be doing. I've been in church just, this church, just 11 years now. And, you know, and you go to other churches. When we go on vacation, we go into churches. There are different kinds of people come to church. There's those that you can tell are active in what the church is doing and what the church's mission is. You know, we've had this ministry appreciation and pastor's appreciation uh, and and. The two today, uh, you know, the two fell in so well together. And, and I asked Brother Chuck, I said, well, some of the stuff that Brother Jim said this morning was stuff that I'd been working on all week. And he said, isn't God funny when you're in the same church? <laughs> that, that, that things might be a little bit parallel because, boy, that would be crazy if we had a like mind in church. Uh, Although that, you know, it, it's what we're supposed to have. It's, we're supposed to be on common ground. But one of the things is we're supposed to know what our mission is. We're not supposed to just walk through the front door, sit down, listen to a message. That's it. Go home and till next Sunday. And that's why we're getting ready to do stuff here at the Crystal Coast Assembly of God. Things are going to start moving. But we have to understand what our purpose is, what our mission is. See, activity is absolutely worthless without productivity. If you're not, you can be running around, you can be doing anything you want to do, but if it's not productive, if you're not on the same sheet of paper, you're spinning your wheels, you're wasting your time. God never wasted his time when he come to earth. Jesus didn't waste a minute. When he did something, he, he had planned it, 
And you know what he did? He called his shots. He didn't waste any time. He didn't waste any time at all. But I, 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 want, I want to turn to Acts, the second chapter tonight, just for a moment. I want to read from the 42nd to the uh, 47th verse of, of that scripture. And then we're going, to be, we're going to talk for a few minutes about being able to hit our target, about knowing why we're here, about the mission, that we're, the, the reason why you're a child of God. I want to continue to go along with what, what were you created for? You were created for good works. Amen. What God intended you to do when he, you became a child of God before he already had what, what he had planned for you to do. And it was good works. Amen. He planned for you to do good works. Let's read that scripture. Uh, if you'll stand with me. I like that. I've always liked that since Pastor Jim uh, has done that. I love it to stand and read God's word. Uh, I'm going to make sure I'm in the right spot because I have done that before. Give somebody scripture and start reading someplace else. It's very embarrassing. <laughs> and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together, and they had all things common. And sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men and every man as every man had need. And they continually daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from the house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of hearts. Praise God and having favor with all the people, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We thank you for just, just, just allowing us to be drawn closer to you, to learn from you, to glean from what you have for us. Lord, just use your servant tonight. Just, just somehow pass a word that somebody can use tonight to take and further your kingdom, because that's why we're here. That's why we're here. We're not here to sit. We're not here to enjoy the AC. We're here to be drawn closer to you, and we're here to be changed, and we're here to go out and reach a lost world. We give you all the praise and glory tonight in your precious name. Amen. 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 What is our business? Why are we here at the Crystal Coast Assembly of God? What are we trying to accomplish? As I said before, activity is not enough. We need productivity. We need to make a difference. Sitting in church every Sunday morning without it going any further in there and sucking up what the people have to say to you, what God has to say to you through his people that he's chosen, through his preachers, through his teachers. If we aren't taking it past this doors, past these doors, it's a waste. It's wasted. It's not God's intent. That's right. He did not intend for a church to be a sanctuary for saints. We have got to go out and reach a lost world. That's what he said. That's what he said. He said to go out in all the world. What, what, what is our purpose? What, what do we need to do? You know, almost a third of my life, I was thinking about this week and, and the church and, and, and what we were supposed to do and what our mission is. And, 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 and if you don't know what your mission is and what you're supposed to be doing, you can be confused. You can lose track of what's going on and, and, and you're not on the same wavelength 
is some other people that are involved in what's going on. You're sitting here, but you don't really get the full picture of what's going on inside the church. You can lose it very, very rapidly. You can misunderstand very quickly what God has for you if you don't understand the mission that's being brought to you every day. When Pastor Jim was talking about a stick with a spinning plate on it, that was wonderful this morning. Each and every one of us have a job to do in this church. And if you're not spinning a plate, you need to start spinning a plate. You need to ask the pastor, what can I do for you? What kind of a stick can I be to help you? Let me take my plate and just go spinning it for God. I just love that this morning. I come home and I says. <sighs> I don't even need to preach. I just need to turn that tape back and listen to it because I needed it. I <laughs> mean, you know, you know we, we just need to know what we're supposed to be doing because we're supposed to be doing something for the kingdom of God. But one third of my life, almost one third of my life, and I was thinking about it today, was spent in the military. And the particular service that I spent it in was the Marine Corps. The Marine Corps... Is, 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 is different than the other branch of the service. If, not, if nothing else, numbers. The Marine Corps is a very small branch of the service and it's very, very important for Marines to be on the same page. Marines cannot afford to be Lone Rangers. They need to be on the same page. They need to understand their mission. And one of the most important things that Marines learn immediately is why they're there and what they are really. What a Marine is, and I don't care what after recruit training, what kind of school you go to, whether you left dual inside tire changer on a five ton, I, I, I don't care. Whether, whether you're fixing a water bowl or purifying water or, or whatever duty you're doing, whatever school you're on, if you're an aviation electrician, it doesn't matter in the Marine Corps. Because your true mission and what you truly are is a rifleman. A Marine is a rifleman first. When trouble starts, a Marine better be able to call his shots and he better be able to hit his target. And so do we need to be as Christians, as a people of God. We need to understand our mission. We need to be able to call our shots and we need to be able to hit our target. You know, out of 11 weeks of recruit training, a Marine recruit spends two weeks on the rifle range. And if there's anything changed with you young Marines that are in here tonight, forgive me. It's been close to 30 years since, since, since I retired. So some things might have changed, but I'm talking to you in, in, in what, it, what, it, what, it, what it was when I was in, what I know. The 20 years I spent out of my life you better be able to shoot. And you better be able to hit your target. Because you are not what you are intended to be if you can't. You know, one of the, one of the worst things in the world is for a Marine to put on his dress uniform and not have a badge. Because it says he's disqualified. He's unqualified. You know, it's terrible for a Christian to sit in church, not be part of the group, not be part of what's going on. You know, I hated to go to, into combat or I hated to go into a combat situation with a Marine that didn't have a marksmanship badge. It's kind of a scary thing. It's kind of scary to work with someone professing to be a Christian that isn't involved in the work of the kingdom. It's just kind of a scary thing. It's like, it's like perhaps uh, that you're talking the talk, but you're not necessarily walking the walk. They're both very important together. What we're trying to do right here at the Crystal Coast Assembly of God is to hit some targets. 
One of the things a Marine does to ensure that he can hit a target because he goes and snaps in. First, there's a little bit of pain. There's a little bit of stuff that's a little bit boring sometimes because you go out in a field and they've set up some 55 gallon drums and they painted them white and they've put some little bitty targets on there and you're sitting there in the grass, in the sand fleas, in the wet and you're practicing with your rifle. You sit there for one solid week, snapping into standing to sitting, standing to kneeling, kneeling to prone. You've got X amount of seconds to get so many rounds off and you want to be as steady, as steady as you can possibly be in that position so you are not movable because not every day is perfectly still. Some days when you go to the rifle range, the wind's blowing. It's blowing you sideways. It's drizzling. Some days the sun's shining. Some days it's, it, it, it's cloudy. Do you know a target from 200 yards that is one foot wide looks very small? At 300 yards, it looks smaller. And at 500 yards, it looks like the end of your little finger especially when the sun's shining, when, when it's cloudy. When the sun's shining, you get the glare and the target looks actually bigger, but it's a false target. You have to know all these things. And where do you keep track of all these things? You keep track of them in your gun book. If Monday you go to the range and, and it's cloudy, you say, Monday, partly cloudy. Wind blowing 10 to 15 miles an hour from 90 degrees. You put your dope, your windage, your elevation, everything you need to hit that target and you put it in that gun book. Because the next day might be entirely different, just like it is here. It's no different here. Every single day might be different. So what do you do? You put the information as a Marine, when you're trying to shoot, you put that information in that gun book. The next day it's sunshiny. The next day it's cloudy. The next day the wind's blowing. When I come back to qualify on Friday, that's when it all matters. It all makes the difference on Friday what I fire at that range. But what I have is all the information that I've accumulated. So if Friday, no matter what the weather is, I can go back to what we called the dope or the information that we acquired and put in our gun book. And we immediately don't have to fool around. We can put the proper windage, the proper elevation on our weapon, and we can call our shots because that's one thing you do. When you fire that weapon, you immediately look down at that little target in that book and you put the dot where you think that round hit. You called that shot. And it's a wonderful feeling when you put it in the black. And when that target comes up, it's spotted in the black. You've called your shot and you've hit your target. And that is what the mission is, to hit your target. So I picked the word target tonight. And we're going to talk about target. For just a minute, not very long. It's like I said, I can't do any better tonight. If you can remember what you heard this morning and you can digest what you heard this morning, that's a lot to digest in one Sunday. <laughs> Because you need to take it home. You need to listen to it again. And those of you on the Internet, if you haven't seen it yet, look at it. Look at it. Listen to it. It's worth it. It will be worth it for you. But let's take the T and target. Because this is what we need to do as children of God. We need to be on target. We need to call our shots. We need to know what we're doing, where it's going, and where it's impacting to make a difference. When you take T, let's call it truth. You know, the word of God is true. And this right here is a Christian's gun book. Amen. Just like a Marine keeps track of that gun book. If you study 
to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word in this gun book. Because it's truth. And the mission of this church, the mission of every Christian, is to go out and disciple and mature other Christians. And the ball is supposed to keep right on rolling. But you need to know. It's like the pastor Jim said this morning, you don't need, you know, I, I love it when somebody goes and, and, and they have the opportunity to go to school and, and they get a theological degree. But most of us don't have that opportunity. Most of us can't do that. And some of us aren't called to do that. But as Pastor Jim said this morning, every single one of us need to know what's in this gun book so we can share what God has done for us with others. And we don't need to pass bum scoop. There's enough of that. We need to know. We need to know. You know, uh, we need to understand that 2 Timothy 3.16 just roughly, it says, it's given by God. The word is given by God, and it is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction. That's what we need to know and be able to do. It's not a hammer-beaten thing. But when you get to go out there and you get to share what God gave you with somebody else, God said, wow, I get to be part of what the Holy Spirit can do as it relates to leading someone to Christ. Isn't that a wonderful thing? God can use me to lead someone to Christ. That is why we're here. That is why we're here. The second letter in target is action. It's action in James 1.22. Don't just sit here and listen. In rough terms, don't just sit here and listen. But do what the word says. Do what the word says. Don't just sum in and listen to the word. Be active. Make it a verb, not a noun. Get out and do it. What was the song the choir did? Get up. <laughs> Get moving. Get involved. Get going. Christianity is an activity. It's not sit and listen. It's an activity. You were created by God for good works. It's an activity. John tells us it's not enough to just talk the talk. We need to walk the walk. Let's go to R. R is relationship. It's like I said earlier. Marines don't do well that try to be long rangers. They're not productive. Things don't get done. Christians are not very productive that try to be lone rangers. When you were saved, you were brought into a community of Christians. You were brought into a church of Christians. And you were meant to work together. Right. You know, the early church, it's kind of wonderful in Acts to read about the early church. In the first part of the second chapter of Acts, it says they were in the upper room all in one accord. Yeah. Did that mean that they agreed on every single thing? I doubt it. They didn't agree with each other when they were with God, with Jesus. That's right. They didn't agree with each other all the time. They had little spats. <laughs> so do we. I don't like how the temperature set. I would have picked a different color. <laughs> The song service is too fast. It's too slow. The preacher <laughs> preaches too long. But now we know what a perfect preacher is. We will no longer have to worry about that. We heard this morning what a perfect preacher is. So we should be able to take care of that problem. <laughs> Here at the Crystal Coast, it should never be an issue again. 
But it's about relationships. Oh, it's wonderful if we could just sit down like the early church and be in one accord. Not that we agree with everything, but we agree on the same mission. And we want to be part of what God has us here for. And we want to work together as a unit to accomplish that mission. If we have a little disagreement about a color, about a carpet, about a song, about a lack of this or a lack of that or too much of this or too much of that, then let it be about that. Not about what God intended to go on in his church. We need to forget it. You know, I love that when I first got here, Pastor Jim, we were back in the back in men's fellowship. And, and he was talking about that night when he did that. And, and this is years ago. And he was talking about that night. He said, if we have a little spat, leave it here. If, and it's not a spat. It's a disagreement. We may disagree. But that's what it is. Let's, let, let's agree to disagree and go on about the business that we're involved in doing. Not let it fester, not let it go any farther than that, because we're not here for that. We're here to reach people for Christ. That's why we're here. We're not about agreeing on which, if, if, which foot to wash first. Uh, you know, people, <laughs> you heard the old story about the church splitting over foot washing. You know, we, we, can, we, can get, we can get a problem with some pretty silly stuff if we forget what our mission is. We can get a pretty silly stuff. But the, but the early church, as it said in the scripture tonight, they were one common goal. And their common goal was to reach people for Christ. That was their common and they shared together and they loved each other. You know, a Christian needs to love the word, learn the word, and live the word. That's what we need to do. We need to get along so we can get it home. It's not about what goes on inside here. It's about what we're doing out there. It's about what we're doing out there. The early church, they were devoted. The scripture says they were devoted to each other. Wow, that's a good feeling to come into church and know that we are that close in our mission that we're devoted to each other. You know, Pastor Jim was talking about you got your plate and you got your stick. You know, did we ever think about all those plates and all those sticks? And we're so devoted to the mission. Maybe you don't notice that your plate's starting to wobble, but I do. And I can walk over and I can just give it a little spin for you. Because we're working together because we can see the same mission and we're on, we're on the same common ground no matter what we're supposed to be doing. We have one common ground. We have a relationship with other. We're devoted to each other. Romans 12, 10 says, be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourself. It'll go a long way. It'll go a long way working together to do that mission that we're in Well, How about G and Target? How about giving? This one's a tough one. The giving part's a tough one. You know, I watched one guy being baptized one day and he, <laughs> he was holding his wallet just as high as he could when they put him under. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> it's a hard thing to do. We like to hang on to our stuff. Not here so much. We got some givers here at the Crystal Coast Assembly of God, but I'm talking in, 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 in a generality. It's hard to be a giver. It was hard for the rich young ruler to give up his stuff and follow Christ. You know, God needs to be our master. Money needs to be our servant. Mm, that's right. Amen. And it doesn't just pertain to the dollar. It pertains to our time. It pertains to our talent. It was given to us by God to begin with. It's his. 
It's just on loan to us. Let him use you in the department of giving as he sees fit because he can be trusted. And as, as it said as many times as I can remember from this pulpit, you can't outgive God. So in the line of giving is a target. It's all part. Look, the stuff that's being piled out there in the fellowship hall had to be moved to the benevolence room because if they, we couldn't get around it, that's a giving people for our upcoming event. That's what it's all about. You give, God blesses. He will bless you much more than you give. He's got a lot more to give you than you'll ever have. E, evangelism, Amen. evangelism. Amen. Second Corinthians, we are Christ's ambassadors as if God were making his appeal through us. You need to remember that. You are a walking, talking billboard for Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what we're here for. That's our target. That's what we need to be. We need to be as much Christ-like out there. Be in the world, not of the world. We need to be different. I don't care whether they call me strange. I've been called strange many times. But I need to be different and so do you. When you're out there, you don't need to blend in with the world or they don't need to hear what you've got to say. If you're just exactly like them, why would they want to change anything? What do you have for them? They need to see Christ in you. You need to evangelize a lost world, but it all ties back together. If we can't go back to the truth and we can't tell them what they should hear, you can't possibly evangel pop, right. properly evangelize a lost world. Share sometimes, you know, you don't need to be any more than a Christian who knows what it felt like and the change that was made in your life to share that to a lost person that's suffering. I was there. I know what you got. I know what God's done for me. And if they see it, it'll be much better than you saying it. Because a lot of them know where you came from. And a lot of them knew you before you got where you are now. They see it. They know it. They see the difference. They see the change. Sometimes if we can evangelize. What a privilege to be a partner with the Holy Spirit and drawing and leading someone to Christ. What a privilege. You know, we're not... <laughs> We're not very awesome by ourselves. There's not much to us by ourselves. But when you have the Holy Spirit helping you, <laughs> God's on your side. And there's not a whole lot you can't do. You can't do. And then the T, the last T in target is task. Is task. Every member of the body of Christ has a role to play. Servants. Workers, ministers, every one of us is a minister of the word of God. You are a servant. You're a minister. I didn't say you were a pastor. I didn't say you were a preacher. But you are a minister of the word. You're a disciple of Christ. Amen. That's right. And you are to go disciple disciples. That's why we're here. That's why we were created. Paul wrote, for we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance Amen. for us to do. Amen. In advance. Right. So let's take the word target. You need to be able to call your shots tonight in the only way you can do it. Is know the word of God. You need to be in the gun book. 
Every single problem that you could ever imagine has been laid out. Every storm, every trouble, every trial, every victory is in your gun book. No matter what comes your way, it's been written down for you already. It's you have the opportunity during snap-in time to understand it. So when it comes time for that target to pop up in front of you, you can call your shot and you can hit it exactly where you intend to. Or, better yet, you can hit it exactly where God intended you to hit it. Because you're led by the Holy Spirit. You're, that round if you know what you're doing is guided by the Holy Spirit and it will hit the target that it was intended to hit every time, every time. Action. What you're doing needs to be louder than your talk. They need to see action. Relationships. Get involved with people. Love one another. Work together. You can't be a lone ranger. Giving, don't be afraid to give. God's got more than you got. And, he's, it, and he doesn't mind handing it out. Amen. Pastor said the other day, he said, you bless somebody, you get blessed. You give to somebody, you help somebody, you get help. God's got a plenty to give. He's not going to run out. And he's not going to let you. He, he said he'd take care of you. He promised he would. That's good Amen. enough. That's good enough for me. That's good enough for me. Evangelize. Get out there. Talk to people. We're getting ready to have a hoopla. You know, we don't mind talking to people in Walmart. We sure don't mind punching a whole bunch of stuff on Facebook. We'll talk all day, some people on Facebook. You don't mind talking to people out in town. You don't mind talking to people at Lowe's. You don't mind talking to people on the street. I've never seen a whole lot said about God on Facebook, but we sure do a lot of other stuff. We don't mind talking. But if we were out doing everything that we do was more or less related to evangelizing the work of God, bringing people in, which is why we're going to have our little 30th thing, it's to let people know we're here. Let them know that we work together. Let them know we're people of action. Let them know we're people that know what they're talking about. And let them know that we love our Lord and we live our life accordingly. And we have tasks to do, every single one of us. If you're not spinning a plate, you need to get a stick. <laughs> I just love that. I can't help it. There's nothing else you can say. If... <laughs> If you, don't, if, if you don't have your Milmac spinning on that stick, you need to get one. Are you part of a team? Have you went and asked somebody, how can I be part of this? Even if you don't have something that you know you've been called to do, God is already at work someplace else. Jump on. Get involved with somebody that's already got something going on. God's working here. If you don't have something specific that you feel you can do, you hop onto somebody else's plate. It'll keep spinning. It'll keep spinning. Matter of fact, it might spin a lot better if two people are holding the stick. There's nothing wrong with a little help. As I said earlier, there's nothing worse than to see a Marine without a marksmanship badge because it means he's unqualified. He's not going to be worth a whole lot when, 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 the, when the storm comes, when the, when the battle starts. The Christian that's it, not involved, I hate to say it isn't worth a whole lot to, to, to the mission. Worth everything to God. God loves you either way. 
But you need to be involved in the mission. You need to be part of the team. You need to call your shots. You need to know what the target is and, and, and you need to be right in there with everybody else. You need to be a part of what's going on. <clears throat> and I'll close with that. There's not much else you can say. There's not much else you can say. You're either able to call your shots or you're not. You're either involved or you're not. And that's what I'll ask you simply tonight. I'll ask you, are you involved? Are you in with the mission that's going on right here at the Crystal Coast Assembly of God? If you're not... It's available to you. We want you to become part of this mission that we're on, this program that we're on. And I'll start with right with the thing that's in that back room right there, right out there in that vestibule. We have got something that's getting ready to go on that could be huge. If you haven't already got with Angel and said, Angel, how can I fill in one of those lines? How can I be of service? What can I bring? How can I be in help? Because we've got a mission going on the 30th that's to evangelize the work of God. And that's the mission of this church. To disciple disciples for Christ. And we need to be about God's work. Lord, I thank you tonight. Oh, you're just a wonderful God and it's so wonderful to be able to, even in our inabilities, to be able to be used for you. And Lord, we want to be used. When we want to know you, we want to know your word, we want to be drawn closer to you, we want to be part of what you have got going on tonight. And we give you all the praise, all the glory in your precious name. Amen.